The 95th annual Academy Awards were historic in so many ways. Not to mention there were plenty of big moments and a few surprises. Here with me now is entertainment journalist and critic Stacey Avon to discuss it all. Stacey, thank you for joining me. Hello, hello. Hi. Well, we are going to get right into it. I just want to begin and ask you to touch quickly on host Jimmy Kimmel and what you think about Jimmy and the overall response to his hosting gig. Um, he was fine. You know, he, <laughs> he has honed it enough. He's done it enough. He knows kind of what, where the line is. Um, he threw some dad jokes in there for good measure. He can't be too <laughs> mad at that. He did reference the slap, but in a way that I thought was very funny and charming and, you know, just like, let's keep moving. So yeah, I thought he did a fine job. The big winner of the night, the sweep. And if I were a betting person, remember the last time we talked, I said I should bet you on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so would you share the the big news of the night? Obviously. Well, everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once. Such <laughs> every a... all of the awards at once. <laughs> exactly. And but you know, I did predict a bit of an upset and for the um, best supporting actress, mm -hmm. and it did end up going to Jamie Lee. But again, again that supported the everything everywhere all at once kind of right. banyan i was so happy i was like okay we're we're to the supporting actress we're going to best picture are they going to give it to them are they going to be like that's enough so i'm <laughs> glad that they kept going <laughs> yes wonderful well and i i want to touch especially on uh Kihui Khan's speech, and of course, Michelle Yeoh's. Would you talk a little yeah. bit about their touching on the significance of their wins? So beautiful. Someone posted a picture of Kiwi hugging Harrison Ford, and then a picture of them hugging like when he was a child. Oh. And it's just like, oh my goodness, like yeah. his journey is so special. And Michelle's journey is so special. And for them to be able to kind of get up there and Michelle was like, little boys and girls who look like me can now say, oh, I I can do this. You know, if, if you want to be it, you have to see it. And that's why representation is so important. And um, yeah, I love that. I thought it was yeah. Well, she also touched on uh, ageism in Hollywood, which I thought mm -hmm. was in important. Yes. And would you, would you talk about that moment? She said, uh, don't let anyone tell you that you're past your prime. Yes. And it's like this year we actually had a few performances, notable performances by more, I guess, seasoned actresses. Yeah. And I was so happy to see that because you kind of, you hear about it on the male side a lot where it's mm -hmm. like, well, the older they get, the more distinguished they get, you know, and right. that right. kind of thing. Whereas women, it's like we become hags and grandmas. So, no. Right. right. So, and yeah. I should have said, yeah, she touched on ageism specific to gender. And yeah, for years we didn't see, I think it was through the entire aughts, there were no best actress winners over 40 yeah. or from the late nineties through the aughts. It was, it was really so wild. I want to turn to some of the performances of the evening, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the song that won from RRR. Would you talk about the significance of that, as well as some of the performances that we saw from Lady Gaga and Rihanna throughout the night? <laughs> you know, RRR, um, I was wondering how many people were watching that performance. Like, what is this? I got to watch RRR now yeah. <laughs> because it was so full. Of, I was very mm -hmm. sad that the guys weren't there. And I think originally they were supposed to be. So I'm not sure what mm. happened. Um, sadly, India's relationship to the Oscars, they apparently submitted a different foreign language film mm -hmm. and it just kind of throws everything out of whack. And one thing the country's known is like, you have to get behind your one film and right. push that for everything it's worth. And I feel like that didn't happen, but I'm sure that there's some Hollywood nonsense reasoning behind it. <laughs> so I was happy that they got their platform in that mm -hmm. way. Um, as for Gaga, you know, I was like, I don't get the black shirt and I don't get the braid, but she's singing her face off. So. It was a great performance. Yeah, it was very stripped. It's very stripped down. Exactly. Gaga. No makeup at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> like, it's classic. Come on. But no. Um, and then, uh, of course, the David Byrne, Stephanie Shu one. Oof, David Byrne has been 
making this comeback, quote unquote, but it's not even really a comeback because he has not left where he was. Well, <laughs> regardless of what the time has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, yeah. you know, it was fun. But Stephanie, beautiful, did her yeah. a fantastic job. But I was just like, I would have rather her sing the song or her and like a Rufus Rainwriter, Phineas or something like that. Oh, yeah. That would have been great at the Oscars and the Governor's Ball. And I actually had this beautiful moment where I got to chat with Ruth Carter for a little while. Oh, and, um, you know, she was really sweet. She said, yeah, it's a lot of hard work. And I thought, well, that's an understatement. So uh, please talk about Ruth Carter's win for uh, costuming. I loved her speech. We kind of knew it was going there. She had been on a campaign. They really backed and supported her and it was well worth it. She has done amazing work for those films. Um, The tribute to her mother, uh, her mom uh, passed away. She said she became one of the ancestors and she was 103, I believe. And I was just like, that is amazing i love kind of hearing those stories but uh i was this her first one or did she she won for the uh for black panther that's what i thought okay yeah. good so yeah i kind of like it full circle <laughs> yeah so that was a beautiful moment mm-hmm. uh, and i want to be sure that we touch on uh well first off jamie lee curtis we touched on that a little bit but what a fun speech it's fun to see jamie lee doing her thing and she yeah. she thanked everyone which mm-hmm. I thought was really quite lovely. Like, as she fans, does. yeah. Right. It's funny yeah. because she could be like a Hollywood diva and get away with it and be totally yeah. fine. But she really is everybody's grandma. <laughs> you know, she's just like, <laughs> she just has that thing. So I was very happy for her. Um, mm-hmm. I know it was very stacked with her and Angela Bassett. And going yeah. back to what we were saying about having more aged women in these categories, you have these two amazing performances up against each other, both by women of a certain age. Mm -hmm. And so um, the Angela Bassett of it all, I was sad, but I kind of knew that they were going to go the Jamie Lee route. And Mm -hmm. um, I know that Angela, whatever she has next, is probably gonna be that thing. So we'll see. I and I love so. the Jonathan Major shout out the hi auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And also she was holding Austin Butler's hand during his category, oh. comforting him. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it was, she just, uh, I do, I love her, love her, love her. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to talk about Brendan Fraser and uh, he won for the whale and I, I like him as an actor. One thing that struck me about these Oscars was they weren't very queer at all, except for Daniel Shiner giving a shout out to have drag harms nobody and right. thank him, you know, I thank him for that because these attacks on LGBTQ plus people are massive. Exactly. So in the press room, Brenda Fraser told my colleague Rafi Ermac that his character Charlie is more than a gay man. He's a father, he's an educator, he's a truth seeker, and he fell hopelessly inconveniently in love with whomever, the, sorry, that he fell hopelessly inconveniently in love with whomever is immaterial, which really kind of bugs me. You won an Oscar for a gay role. Uh, so I wonder your general thoughts about the kind of lack of queerness other than, you know, presenters like Janelle Monet, Ariana DeBose, Car- Cardi Levine, et cetera. Right. Sarah, yes. uh, Sarah Polly woman talking. So excited about that. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Um, a lot of the reason I couldn't stand that movie, <laughs> yeah. and I am notorious on whale. record for yeah. hating that movie, um, was because the actors had a view of the character that I didn't see come through. And for me, Charlie was not a hero. He was not someone who was looking for truth. He was so, he wrote a two-hour suicide note, essentially. And it was... In, even when they were talking about the makeup, the picture that they chose to use, did you see that? Yes. It was like, in the background, I said, what, what is this? You're making him look like a monster. Right. Well, that- Darren Aronofsky shot that film like a horror movie. Exactly. Yeah. And then has the nerve to be like, oh, it's not fat phobic. It's about the internet. I'm like, No, it is. It 100% is. Stacey Yvonne, entertainment journalist and critic. Thank you, as Thank always, you. for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Such a joy. Thank you for having me. Of course.